In this video, I'm going to show you can hover over a map marker and change the icon when it's hovered. So you can see here, we have a map loaded in our bubble app. And every time we hover over one of the map markers, we're getting the Starbucks icon to show up. Now, we can also show a different icon when the markers are hovered for each of the different map markers. So this time around, you'll see I'm getting a star there, a house there. So we can set it up so that we get a different hover icon depending on what marker it's hovered. We're going to go through all that as well. So throughout this video, we're going to be using Mapbox to add maps to our bubble app. It is a paid service, but there's actually a really generous free tier. So you're going to be able to get by for quite a while on just the free tier. Now, in order to connect Mapbox to our bubble app, we're going to be using the beautiful Maps Mapbox plugin, which is this plugin here. It is a Cranford Tech plugin, and you can find it by going to the Add Plugins button in your bubble editor and searching for Beautiful Maps Mapbox. Once you have it installed, you're going to need to add some access tokens. So you can see down here, there's two fields, and it's actually the same token that's required in both. So sign up for your free Mapbox account, go to Access Token, Create a Token. I'm going to call this Hover Demo. And then really importantly, we do want to restrict this access token to the specific URL that your map is going to be on. So I'm going to take this page here, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste that in. You may prefer just to do it to the entire uh, website, which you can do by just you know leaving it at that style URL. So once you have that, you can then create your token and put it in this section here of your bubble app. Okay, next thing is we're actually going to get the map box map element, which is an element that comes with the plugin. So I'm going to go here to map box map and just drag this in a container. I'm going to take off the fixed width and fit height and then let's take a look at that so you can see that's loading up okay two things i'm going to be primarily using locations based in uh, new york for this demo so i want to change to those areas and i also want to zoom in a bit so on the map what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the default zoom to 13 and rather than have these default longitude and latitude values what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a destination that is already in my database and I'm going to go through in a second how you actually um, set this up. But you can see here the very first location of my database is on 9th Avenue in New York. So let's go there. And what we can do is we can say for the longitude default, we can do a search for locations in our database and we can get the very first item and then get its longitude. And then I'm going to copy this expression and I'm going to paste it into the latitude field and I'm simply going to change that to latitude. A little tip, you can see here my app is actually reloading automatically whenever I make a change. I'm just using this really handy auto reload page on update plugin, uh, which is a free plugin. I uh, just find it saves a lot of time if you're making changes in your application. Okay, so we can see now we have our map and maybe before we start adding in markers, just briefly on how you might add a location to your database. So what I have in my database here is a data type called location. And I have a geographic address with the name address. I have a latitude and a longitude value. And I have an image for the hover. Now, there's some other fields here, but they're not relevant to our purposes today. There are a bunch of other videos uh, you can see in this plugin's documentation. Um, so check them out if you're interested. But I'm just going to focus on those fields. And what I've done is I've created a page called add locations that simply has an address which is a search box, and you can see the choice is styled as geographic places, and I have a hover image. So what you would do is you would, every time you want to add a new location, you could bulk upload, but you could also do create a new thing, create a location, and for address, you could just do the search box addresses value. And then for latitude, what you could do is you could do search box addresses value, and then it's latitude. Now, I actually prefer saving down the latitude and longitude values rather than just using the address because every time you use an address with Bubble, you're actually using the kind of Google API. So I just prefer having the hard values saved in my database. Uh, similar for longitude, you would just say equals search box addresses values and then it is longitude. And then for image hover state, you would just have uh, uploaders input, not quite sure what that's called. 
picture uploader and store image is what that's called and put its value in. So you can then upload locations to your database just by filling out those fields. I'm actually not going to do that now just because I've already uploaded a bunch. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go back to my hover markers page and you can see at the moment we have a workflow that we're setting up, no actions at the moment. But every time the page is loaded, what we're going to do is we're going to go to element actions and then for map box, we should have one here that's add a list of markers to a map box map. And this gives us a bunch of ways we can customize the markers we're going to load. But what we're going to do is we're going to go and do a search for locations. And we want each item's longitude. For latitudes, we're going to go for do a search for locations and then each item's latitude. Pop up content, draggable, not going to go into these now. Uh, I am concerned with the hover mode, but let's come back to that in a second. Let's just see how our app is looking. And again, you can see we've already added the markers. Every time the page is loaded now, we're getting all these markers. Now, at the moment, Whenever we hover over a marker, nothing's happening. But what we can do is in this field here, you can see here we have a, a section called hover mode. And let's say we want to show a single image for all of the markers when they're hovered. We can put it in this field here. And what I've actually done is I've created an option set. And you can see here is for custom icon. One is a Starbucks logo, which you can see there. And the other is a coffee cup, which you can see there. So let's load up our coffee cup for this example. If we go to get an option and go for coffee cup and go for its icon, hopefully now whenever we hover over a marker, we're going to get that coffee cup rather than, ah, and we're actually getting everything by default because I put that in the wrong field. I should have put this in the hover mode field. Again, just a good example of what else you can do, but let's go back and go to get an option, coffee cup and its icon. So let's refresh again. Okay, and now we have our default markers, but whenever we hover them, we're getting our nice coffee cup. So that's great, but let's say this time we want to create an effect where each marker has a different icon that's been shown in our hover mode. What we can do is if we go back to our database, you'll notice that on the location data type, I've saved down different image for image hover state here for pretty much all the locations. And what we can do is we can clear out the icon image single field in hover mode and we can go to do a search for location and we can go for each item's image hover state and this time when we hover over a marker we're hopefully going to get the image that's unique to that specific location so you can see there it's a house for that one a star a thumbs up a star and that other one so yeah you can really customize this as much as you want with either of those setups that's just two ways you can do it. So hope this has been useful. If you have any questions, you can let us know in the comment section below.